Bay class. From the previous video, we understand that the heart governs the blood and vessels. The blood circulation will rely on the heart qi. Heart the volume of the blood, the, the condition of the vessels, and if these three aspects are actually related to each other, as the, the volume of the blood will rely on the, the heart because the heart can create the blood. The condition of the vessels will also rely on the heart as the heart governs the, the vessels. So the blood circulation will rely on the, the proper function of these three aspects, the combination of these, all these three aspects. In this video, we are going to continue the discussion on the heart. The heart houses the mind. The mind, sometimes it is translated as the spirit. In a broader sense, it is the outward appearances of the vital activities of the whole body. As you can see from here, we refer to the appearance of the human activities, the activities of individuals manifested through the expression of the eyes, facial complexions, speech, and the movements of the physical body. As the mind or the spirit can be reflected through these aspects, the eyes, the facial complexion, speech, and the movements. So in future, when we study the diagnostics, the observation on these aspects is very important to identify the spirit or to, ident to identify the mind. In a narrow sense, it refers to the consciousness, including the thoughts and emotions. As you can see from here, no matter from a broader sense or from a narrow sense, in Chinese medicine, the spirit actually refers to the activities or the thoughts, emotions of individuals. There's no spiritual perspective in Chinese medicine. This, this is one of the reasons that we change the spirit into the mind. This is one of the most important distinctions of Chinese medicine from other traditional medicine. In Chinese medicine, we separate the spiritual aspects from 400, before 475 BC as we studied the history. Because the heart houses the mind, and the mind refers to the consciousness, so if a patient suffers from the, the disorder of consciousness in the, during the treatment, we will focus on the, the heart. We will focus on the heart function to recover the heart function. This is another difference from Chinese medicine and the conventional medicine. The consciousness in conventional medicine is from the brain. However, in Chinese medicine, in our treatments, we're going to focus on the brain as well as the heart. Because the heart houses the mind, and the heart is in charge of the, the mind or the spirit of the whole body. The active function of the mind will rely on the blood. So the blood, we, the mind needs, needs the nutrition from the blood in order to perform its function. Blood is the physical material or the material foundation of the spirit or of the mind. This also can be seen from the clinics. A patient suffers from blood deficiency. The, the patient may present with dizziness, poor memory, or very hard to concentrate. So these are something related to the consciousness or related to the thoughts. So from this point of view, we understand that the heart houses the mind, and this function also will rely on the, the blood. So these two functions of the heart govern the blood and vessels and houses the mind. These two different functions, they also link together because the blood is the material foundation 
of the the function of the, the mind. Again, when we see from the yin and yang perspective, the heart governs the blood and vessels. The blood and vessels are something we can see, the physical blood and vessels. So these are yin. When we say the mind or spirit, these are yang. So as you can see, when we talk about the, the heart, we talk about the heart yin, we talk about the heart yang. So as you can see, this is an, exam an, an example that's of the yin and yang application. As we study, you will realize this kind of thinking anywhere. It is widely applied in the, in the theory. The heart is a yang organ. Sometimes it is also called as the fire organ. One of the reasons is because in according to the fire element theory, the heart belongs to the fire. This is a very old Chinese char character of the heart. From the drawing, from the shape, you will feel like this, this drawing, it looks like the, the fire. So also as can, you can see from the, char the characters, it implies that the heart is a fire. When we say the heart is a yang organ, we actually emphasize the heart function the heart yang to promote the circulation, to pound the heart, maintain the heartbeat. These are all rely on the heart yang. However, when we emphasize the yang, we should never forget the heart yin. The heart function is the combination of the heart yang and heart yin. Because the heart is a yang organ, in the treatment, we also don't want to cool the heart too much. So we need to keep the heat in the heart. When talking about the relationship with the emotions, body fluid, body constituents, and orifice, jewelry as the emotion of the heart, sweat as the body fluid of the heart. When talking about the sweat, in, according to the theory, we agree that the sweat is the result of the, the concentration or the result of the heart actions and heart blood. From this point of view, in future, we also will study that the blood and the sweat are actually coming from the same origin. When you understand the, the sweat and the blood is coming from the same origin, we need to think about the treatments. For example, a patient suffers from bleeding, lack of blood. In our treatments, we will prevent or we will avoid to cause excessive sweating because if a patient is bleeding, the patient will be lack of blood. And then in the meantime, the patient may lack of sweat. And when you create the sweating, increase the sweating, it will make the blood deficiency worse. So that's the relationship. Because the sweat is the body fluid of the heart. Blood vessels is the body constituents of the heart. In complexion, this complexion mainly refers to the facial complexion. So if we need to see the heart function, the first thing we want to see, we want to observe, is the facial complexion. For instance, if a patient presents with a red facial complexion, then we can consider that the, the patient suffers from heart, excess heart heat. If a patient suffers from a pale facial complexion, then we can conclude that the patient may suffer from heart yang deficiency. It's from the facial complexion because the heart can reflect in the heart function or the heart condition can re be reflected in the facial complexion. The thumb is the orifice of the heart. The thumb is linked to the heart. The thumb links to the heart according to the 
the meridian, the blood vessels, and to the speech, the voices. Previously, we mentioned that the heart houses the mind. The mind, in a, in a broad sense, it also includes the speech, the movements. So that's why the tongue is considered as the orifex of the heart. The heart co corresponds to the summer, corresponds to the sea, different seasons. From this point of view, we can see the patient, especially if the patient suffers from heart yang deficiency. The symptoms can be relieved in summer. So the patient will feel better in summer. If the patient suffers from heart in deficiency, the in deficiency will present with deficiency heat. So in this situation, the patient may present uh, the worst symptoms in summer. So the heart corresponds to the summer. In some situations, if the patient suffers from the heart yang deficiency, the yang deficiency will cause the, the disease become worse in winter. In this kind of patient, the patient may be relieved in summer and we can focus on the treatment during the summer to treat the disease in, to prevent the, the occurrence in winter. So this, this principle is because treating the disease in summer for the disease in winter, especially with more sebastian. In future, when we study the treatment techniques, we, we may use the more sebastian to create or to benefit the, the heat or the yang qi in the body, which will relieve the heart yang deficiency, especially in winter. Pericardium is a membrane surrounding the heart. The meridian connects with Sanjiang. Its function is to protect the heart. The pericardium is not, um, not an important organ in Chinese medicine theory. The pericardium and the heart, they stay together. The, the function of the pericardium is, man, is similar to the heart. The only difference, especially in other readings, material, reading materials, when we see pericardiums, when we talk about pericardiums, we actually refer to the heart diseases. Because according to the theory, the heart is considered as the emperor, one of the most important organs of, the, of all the internal organs. So in, from this point of view, we don't want to say that something wrong with the heart. If something wrong with the heart, we're going to blame the pericardium. This is a um, very old thinking. For example, in a country, the king will never make mistakes. If there are some mistakes, they will blame the ministers. So that's very similar to here. We think that the heart is the emperor. If the heart got diseases, we, we're going to say that peric the pericardium have some problem. For example, the phlegm block the pericardium. It is actually the phlegm block the heart because in future when we when you see the symptoms, all those symptoms are actually related to the heart, not only the pericardium. But when we say we prefer to say that the, the pericardium. So we're not going to discuss a lot about the pericardium. What you need to remember is the pericardium, the function, especially the manifestations of the pericardium problem, is very similar to the heart problem. The treatments, we also focus on the heart. The next organ we are going to study is the lung. The lung locates in the thoracic cavity. Above the diaphragm, it communicates with the throat and opens into the nose and mouth. From the description, we will understand that the, the lung connects with the nose and mouth directly. So the pathogens affect the troubles from the nose and the mouth may affect the lung directly. For example, a 
patient may present with flu symptoms or pneumonia, fever, coughing, runny nose, all these related to the nose and mouth. The symptoms can limit in the nose or in the lung. On the meridian, the lung meridian connects with the large intestine. The orifice is the nose. It's one term here, florid canopy. This is a direct translation. The florid canopy refer originally refers to the umbrella when the emperor travels. When the emperor travels, there will always be an umbrella on top of the emperor. This this umbrella we call flor florid canopy. On this point of view, the umbrella can protect the emperor. When we see from your our anatomy, the heart sits in the upper jaw in the chest. The lung, something on top, the emperor. We says that the, the heart is very important in the organs, in the internal organs. The heart is considered as the emperor of the all organs. So the, the emperor here, something on top of the emperor, that's the, the umbrella, floor, florid canopy. On the position, the lung is higher than the heart, is higher than the emperor. On the function, the, the umbrella, the canopy, can protect the emperor. So this is a umbrella can protect the emperor. It can protect the emperor. So from anatomy, from the organs, the lung, which links to the throat and mouth and throat, the lung which links to the throat and mouth, can protect the heart being attacked by the pathogens from different pathogens. So from the function. We also consider the lung similar to the umbrella. So literally, we say the lung, we consider the lung as the florid canopy. The functions of the lung mainly focus on three aspects, the qi, the water, and vessels. The lung governs the qi and breathing. This qi refers to both the qi of the body as well as the qi in the breathing. In the previous video, when we studied the definition of the qi, we said that the original meaning of qi is the air. So the air the, from the breathing is included in the qi. The lung governs the qi, includes the qi of breathing and the qi of the body. Because the lung is where the interchanges of the air between the body and the nature takes place. If the function has been affected, this function, the lung governs the breathing, the breathing qi has been affected. The patient may present with the symptoms that are related to the breathing, such as coughing, tachinia, and chest tightness. Qi of the whole body. This includes both the innate qi and the acquired qi. The qi from the food, which is the acquired qi, and the air from breathing will be stored, will be combined and be stored in the chest. This is called petrol qi. We're going to discuss the petrol qi in future in more detail. The abnormal breathing will affect the petrol qi which may further affect the qi of the whole body, resulting in qi deficiency. The patient may present with fatigue, short of breath, tiredness, low voice. The breathing function is a vital function in the function of governing the qi. How does the, how does the lung achieve the function of governing the qi? It is a through the dispersing and descending. The dispersing and descending 
is it it is actually the the function the the, the function the movement of the chi we have four movement of the chi ascending descending dispersing and gathering as we breathe in and out the these four movements actually combines to each other however the dispersing and descending function is are not only focused on the regulation of the qi it also assists the regulation of the water that's why we says the lung governs the regulation of the waterways and the dispersing and descending function the qi, the qi the clear the the clear water may be transported to the upper part of the body and superficial skin to nourish the body and transform to be the sweat so the sweating is in charge by the by the lung the cloudy parts of the water will be transported downwards which is which is through the descending function this parts of the water will be transformed into the urine eventually so here the second function the regulation of the water it doesn't have to be the waterways the waterways is one of the the, the results it regulates the water the water metabolism for example the pathogens if the pathogen affects the lung more specifically it affects the function of regulating the water patient may present with no sweat or even edema and these this this function will further affect the governing of breathing the qi the patient may present with cough tachinia these symptoms are very common in patients such as heart failure or kidney failure so in this kind of patient in heart failure or kidney failure, this kind of patient during the treatment, apart from the treatment towards the heart or kidney itself, we will focus on the lung as well. The, as the lung governs the regulation of the water, especially the urine. If the patient presents with the less urine or no urine, then we will focus on the kidney and the lung. The lung links with all vessels. As we mentioned previously, that the heart governs the blood, which includes the promotion of the blood circulation. This, this function of the heart, the promoting of the blood, blood circulation, will be achieved with the assistance from the lung. In other words, the lung may assist the heart in promoting the blood circulation. The heart qi, the heart, especially the heart yang qi, can promote the circulation. However, this circulation, this promotion, needs to be assisted by the petrol qi. It also can be reflected in the function of the lungs. The lung governs the qi, the qi of the body, includes the petrol qi. The petrol qi has the function of promoting the blood circulation. In one situation, if the patient suffers from the lung qi deficiency, the patient may result in blastasis, the patient may present with palpitation, chest tightness, bluish lips, or purple tongue. On the other hand, if the heart yang deficiency the patient suffers from the heart deficiency, especially the heart yang deficiency or the heart qi deficiency. There's no, not, there's no enough qi of the heart in the body. The patient may present with short of breath or tachinia. So as you, you can see here, the lung and the heart function, they are linked to each other. The lung's problem may affect the heart in terms of the circulation, the heart problem 
also may affect the lungs function in terms of the breathing function. The lung governs the regulation of the qi, the blood and blood body fluid, mainly through the function of dispersing and descending. The dispersing includes the something moving outwards and outwards, descending, moving downwards. From these discussions, we understand, understand that the, function, the lungs function mainly focus on the qi, the water and the vessels, the qi movements, the water movements, the, the movement of the water and the vessels in terms of the blood circulation. When talking about the relationship with the emotions, body fluids, body con constituents, and orifice, the sorrow is the emotion of the lung. In Huang Di Nei Jing, it described that patients suffer from sorrow always will have qi deficiency. In this situation, we can see from the clinic that the patient with the, the, the sorrow patient may present with short of breath, fatigue. On the contrary, if a patient suffers from the lung deficiency, in this situation, the patient is more likely to be sorrow. So from this point of view, the emotion may affect the, the, lung, the lung's function. The lung's function also may result in the emotion changes. Narrow mucus as the body fluids of the lung. This can be seen in patients, the, the pathogens that, that attack the lung, for example, the common flu. The patients suffer from the wind or heat. The narrow mucus, the property of the narrow mucus will be changed, either clear or yellowish. So from the changes of the narrow mucus, we can it can reflect the pathogens that affect the lung, either cold or heat. The skin as the body constituents of the lung and body hair as the splendor. From this point of view, when we see the patients suffer from skin disorder, apart from treating the skin directly, we also need to think about the, the root cause from the lung. So we can treat the lung for the skin problems. This source is very special in Chinese medicine. We are treating the internal organs for external diseases. The relation between the skin and the lung also can be reflected from the other way. For example, some pathogens, they are more likely to attack the skin. In future, when we study the etiologies, we will understand that some pathogens they either attack the skin or they affect the human body through the nose and mouth. So some pathogens, they are more likely to attack the skin. Once the skin has been attacked, the patient may present with dysfunction of the lung, such as the nasal blockage, cough, headache, no sweat, and tense pulse. So these are the are from the relationship between the skin and the lung, the nose as the orifice of the lung. The lung corresponds to autumn because the lung is always moist. In autumn, sometimes it's dry, especially in Johannes' work. So in autumn, sometimes the, we need to protect the moisture, the moisture of the lung to avoid the dry cough dry nose or even nose bleeding and some dryness on the skin. In these two videos, we have studied the, the heart and the, the lung. As you can see from the discussion, in the physiology of Chinese medicine, we are not, when we talk about the organs, we are not only focused on the physical structure of the organs, we actually more focus on the function of the organs. The heart governs the blood and vessels. The heart houses the mind. The heart is considered as the emperor, as the most important organs. 
of the human body. The lung, the lungs function mainly focus on three aspects: the qi, the water, and the vessels. So you're going to you're going to think from this way. The regulation of the qi, the regulation of the water and the vessels. In the next video, we are going to continue the discussion on the spleen. Thank you for your attention.